What is up, ladies and gentlemen? You're watching another episode of Madman Film Room right here on the Madman Sports Network. I'm Brian Sullivan. I apologize. You might notice that I'm a little calmer than my usual mad self. It's pretty late as I'm recording this episode. Really the only time I had to do it, but I had to get more content out for you. Let's not miss a beat. The main point of this video is that a lot of people are sleeping on the Chiefs this year. You know, it's kind of weird, especially as a Chargers fan. You know, I know I shouldn't root for any teams, but whatever. Seeing everybody just claiming them to be the sole winner of the AFC West is kind of shocking to me, and seeing people think the Chiefs will not be successful with their new quarterback. And I'm here to show you why, if anything, the Chiefs could be more successful, and I like Alex Smith. So before we get to the Patrick Mahomes section, let's just take a look at the offense that Patrick Mahomes is going to get to be a part of. Now, I'm not going to sit here and show you Kareem Hunt's running ability. Assuming you're watching this video, you're well-informed enough to know that Kareem Hunt is good and that the Chiefs were able to run the football. They led the league in yards per attempt at 4.7. They were successful. But I'm going to show you what it leads to, especially when you have weapons like Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey, one of the best tight ends, one of the best deep threats in the league, not even including Sammy Watkins, not even really going to touch on that. So this first play here, I just want you to watch. I want you to pay attention here at how many men are in the box right now. There's only one deep safety right here. Everybody else is up close, and that's because the Chiefs are able to run the ball so effectively. So when they line up like this, there's a real threat for them to run the ball. And now you're going to see Alex Smith, little play here. And see Travis Kelsey, he's wide open over here, and he gets a huge gain. So it's going to be a nice, easy offense, creative offense. Now, again, watch this. Notice right here, and also ignore this as Bears preview there, how all these linebackers are keyed in on Kareem Hunt because the Chiefs run screens so effectively. And because Travis Kelsey is such a good blocker, you can disguise him as a blocker, let him slip out here. Also, you notice that Travis Kel uh, Tyreek Hill is commanding so much attention deep, it creates a nice open field for him. So again, there's going to be, not plenty, but there will be opportunities for Patrick Mahomes, the young gunner, to just find easy, open gains. This is not a stagnant offense. It's not like he's being thrown in to the, the Denver Broncos offense of last year or the, you know, you know um, the, the Seahawks offense where, you know, if you're not Russell Wilson, you don't have to stand a chance. This is a good offense. So here's another one right here. Again, I want you to pay attention to Travis and Tyreek Hill right down here. And just keep an eye. I'll let it kind of run through once. Now, this play looks like nothing special. Alex Smith ends up running, and he gets brought down. But let's go back and take a look at what we have right here as he's kind of running through. And as we get to Patrick Mahomes and we kind of show what he can do later, you'll understand why this play is so relevant. You see Tyreek here matched up against uh, Trevor Williams. Now, he has some nice inside leverage here. With Tyreek Hill's speed, I don't care how good you are, how good of a corner you are, he's running up there, especially with Jaleel Adai here being concerned with Travis Kelsey. This is a pick-your-poison type of scenario. And if you have a good enough arm, which Patrick Mahomes does, especially you see this uh, cornerback right here kind of keying in on what's going on over here, you can get a Travis Kelsey with all this open space here, or Tyreek Hill again has all this open space. Alex Smith does not have that good of an arm, so unfortunately he ends up just getting brought down here. Even though he had this space, he would have been able to set his feet and make another throw. And again, once I show you what Patrick Mahomes is capable of, you'll understand why he might have been able to make a play there. So here's another one right here. And again, I want you to keep an eye on Travis Kelsey right down here for this play. Alex Smith ends up forcing it into double coverage to Tyreek Hill. Now let's go back again and look. Now you see all this attention that Tyreek Hill is commanding. Because of that, See this corner here? It looks like it was some sort of zone. He ends up realizing you have Travis Kelsey matched up one-on-one, -on -one, and he has outside leverage this time against this safety. And right here, look at this. He has him beat now because Travis Kelsey is so fast, so athletic, and one of the best tight ends. If not, I mean, I, I think he's number two behind Gronk, but if you consider health, he might be the most valuable tight end in football. And again, at this point, Alex Smith instead forces it to Tyreek. But a really strong arm quarterback, hint, hint, would have been able to find Travis Kelsey there. There are going to be open men in this offense. There are receivers and weapons that are able to create separation, and that's really the point that I'm trying to convey here. This is one more right here, and again, we'll just run it through one time. This is going to be a nice, easy touchdown for Alex Smith to a wide-open Travis Kelsey for a touchdown. So again, this is to show you what type of offense Patrick Mahomes is going to get to work with, and again, that's excluding the addition of Sammy Watkins. Even if Sammy Watkins gets hurt, which he has tended to do in, his, in the past, um... This is still going to be a fine offense, especially with Andy Reid calling plays. Yes, they lost Matt Nagy, as you heard in my Bears preview. I think he was a crucial factor, but that's besides the point. 
So you see here again, the attention Tyreek Hill commands, both safeties are going to be worried about him right there. And Travis Kelsey runs such a nice route here where he cuts up, and this safety now doesn't stand a chance, and that's how he gets open. So again, the main point of those four plays was just to show you that especially in an offense that's able to run the ball, that has options like this, this is a young quarterback's dream to get thrown into. So let's get to the quarterback himself, Patrick Mahomes. And we'll start with his college days before we even get to, because there's not that much NFL film on him. So let's show some of just the raw talent of what he's able to do. Now, I read uh, a little bit ago in a Pat Kerwin's book, Keep Your Eye Off the Ball, very good book, uh, you know, for kind of learning very basic uh, information about football. One of the main things he looks for is accuracy towards the sideline. And you're going to watch here the way Patrick Mahomes just drops the ball in perfectly over here on the sideline to his open receiver. Drops the, you know, people say he didn't have touch. People said he was just kind of like Josh Allen. No, no, no. Patrick Mahomes actually has a beautiful touch on the balls that he throws, including that one. And here's another one right here. Watch 40 yards down to the sideline, outside shoulder, keeps it away from the cornerback with that one-on-one -on -one coverage. That is a beautiful throw. Doesn't get more perfect than that. So here's another one right here. He's just creative. You're going to see him roll out to the right, pressure coming in his face. He manages to avoid the sack, gets back on his feet, very Russell Wilson-esque, throws it up, finds the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Now in the NFL, that's a dangerous throw. Maybe it won't work. But again, we've seen Russell Wilson make throws like that. He had his tight end in one-on-one -on -one coverage against a linebacker, and the tight end made the right play. He put it where he could only get it. Now again, maybe you can't lob it up like that. There's going to be a throw similar that we'll look later, though, where you see he has the arm strength to get it to where only his receivers can make the plays but that's just really nice creativity innovation right there on the field and good pocket not pocket like avoidance pressure avoidance he's very good at avoiding pressure slipping off of defenders very nice stuff here's another one right here and again avoids the pressure steps up off balance zips it in over three defenders now let's just watch that one more time watch the way again he steps up off balance feet were not set and still manages to drop it right in over these three defenders. That's just beautiful accuracy to, and, and again, imagining what he's going to be able to do when he's working with even more talented offensive personnel. He got a hard, notice how much pressure he's under in a lot of these clips, because his offensive line at Texas Tech was atrocious. So the people that said, oh, he threw too many interceptions, any quarterback would have in that system. Oh, you know, he made some bad decisions. Yeah, he's young, and he was under a ton of pressure. This is about the raw talent. Now this last one right here, just watch. This is going to be a bomb here. And notice he's off balance, leaning back with pressure in his face, and he delivers a bomb to the open, albeit wide open, Kiki QT. But you're telling me the Tyreek Hill's not going to end up burning coverages like that a few times. And the fact that he was able to do that while he's again. What makes this throw impressive is not that he got the open man, it's that he's off balance, and he manages to still deliver that downfield. The arm strength is impeccable. So now let's get to his NFL abilities. Uh, I watched the film against Denver, and just to see what he proved he was capable of, and keep in mind, this is a game where most of the starters were benched. Travis Kelsey did not play in this game. You know, Tyreek Hill did not play in this game. Sure, some of the offensive linemen, I I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say that it wasn't all the offensive linemen. It looks like Kareem Hunt was in early, so younger players were in. But this is the typical Andy Reid. They had their playoff spot clinched, and they benched a lot of starters. So this is not the full offense. First play right here, he's going to roll out, off balance with pressure in his face again, and I know it's a drop, and he probably could have put a little more touch on this, but watch how, while he's getting hit, again, off balance, feet are not set at all, he delivers, look at that, right into the hands of the receiver, tough catch to make, he is getting mauled, and this isn't an all-pro receiver by any means, but look at where that ball placement is, only where he can catch it, right in his hands, and he just drops it. That is a great throw, really as good as it gets. So here's another one right here, back to that creativity his ability to avoid pressure. You see they leave a wide open hole here, so he knows immediately he's under pressure. He manages to slip the tackle while his legs are still, so again, off balance, does not even have his feet set, zips it in there one-on-one -on -one to his man. So that's just great arm strength and great ability to find the one-on-one -on -one coverage nobody else can get there. Now this is another one right here. Play action, again, pressure coming, he steps up, Look at where his feet are. Again, these aren't even set. These are the types of throws that you need to be able to make in the NFL. These are the types of throws that Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Andrew Luck make that makes them so special. And he managed to zip it all the way over there to a wide open receiver. Let's look at this again. 
Notice where his head is looking. I do think he does tend at times to stare down receivers, and that's expected from a young quarterback. You know, it's going to take time. But notice where, when he throws it, wherever, look, this defender right here is running over here. Because he was staring at the middle of the field, specifically at this receiver right here, I'm not sure who it is, all of the defenders, as he's running, assume that that's where he's going to go or that he's going to run right up here because he's athletic enough to do that. And then at the last second, he finds his wide open man over here. That's just, that's just talent. That is not teachable. You cannot teach quarterbacks. I like, you know, guys like, I, like guys like, I can't even think right off the top of my head, but because I'm trying to think of really good quarterbacks, but like a guy like, you know, Matt Ryan or Phillip Rivers, like they're not going to make that throw regularly. Now this last one right here is a very nice NFL throw. You're going to see tight end, big tight end here, matched up one-on-one. -on -one. He sees that he hasn't beat. Mahomes throws it up. Now, this is a fantastic catch as well. And I wish I could really zoom in on him here. But notice where the ball is placed, where he catches it. I wish, again, you could zoom in and see it more. He threw that ball where only the tight end could get it. And you see there's this safety here as well. So notice the ball is a little more. The tight end starts running towards this hash mark right here. This hash mark right here. This 40-yard line right here. Hash from Mahomes knew to throw it, throw it away from this safety, above this safety, where his big body tight end is the only person who can catch it. Now, I should have just let that play through, and I will this time. But notice again where the ball is placed. Only his tight end could have made that catch. If he does overthrow it, because he has a tendency to, you know, he has such a strong arm, that's going to end up just going here, harmless play. He's not throwing it towards this defender. He's not underthrowing it. He understands, put it where either your receiver can catch it or nobody can. These were just four of the throws. There were a few other nice throws, but I didn't feel like throwing them in. And, of course, he had some bad throws, too. Um, but a lot of it was a result of just being under pressure and, again, not having the talent around him. His stats were pretty nice. He was 22 for 35, so not great, but not terrible. About 280 yards, uh, no touchdowns, and a pick. So, again, not a great stat line by any means, but considering that he didn't have his top two options, and I'm assuming Kareem Hunt didn't play much of this game. You know, I did watch the film. I wasn't really paying attention to the running game. I was paying attention more to where he was throwing, what Patrick Mahomes was doing. I should have. That's kind of my bad on my part, but that's just that's just how it is. The main point here is that you take a kid this talented, you, know, you give him a whole offseason, and you know what, this, this is kind of intangible BS too, but still, listen to the interviews. This is obviously somebody who takes his work, he has serious work ethic, and you just consider everything. I don't understand how more people aren't buying into that. And I'm telling you, do not be surprised at all if he's a top 10 passer when it comes to yardage or touchdowns. He's going to be a phenomenal fantasy option. And the Chiefs are still the team to beat in the AFC West this year. And quite frankly, if he really reaches his peak, I'm not going to go quite as far to say I guarantee it, but right behind the Patriots and Steelers, I would argue that the Chiefs right now might be the third most likely team to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. I think he's that good. I think this offense is that good. Again, as you saw earlier, what they're able to do, that didn't even include, they're going to be able to run the ball, whether Kareem Hunt is healthy or not, although he should be. He doesn't have much injury history from last year. I don't remember, at least. Including Sammy Watkins as well. This is going to be a dynamite offense. And when you have a playmaker like Mahomes, who again, he's not super refined, but you just see the creativity, quick thinking, Ability to make plays even when the circumstances aren't perfect. That's what you need to be successful in this league. I am so excited to see what he's able to do. Again, apologies for this weird tone again, but it's 10.30 at night. My roommate's got work tomorrow, and I can't be yelling. And this is really the only time I had, but I, I had to get this video out. I was so excited, and it's really my last chance to record and post a video until next week. Preseason football is close, guys. I might get one more video before that out, but besides that, you can definitely expect uh, at that point, I plan on looking at that Ravens-Bears game. Whatever sticks out to me, there's a very good chance you'll be seeing a nice little breakdown of how Lamar Jackson performs if he plays. Uh, if he doesn't, not really sure. We'll see. Thanks again, guys. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.